Hello again everybody, welcome back to part 12 of the Trumpeter 200 scale Bismarck build. You can see that uh, I'm starting to build up the superstructure elements or at least get them ready for building. Uh, I've finished the uh, superstructure decks completely, those are the two pieces that I've been working of, on over the last month. Uh, and I'm now starting to build up the superstructure but before I do that this week I want to sort out this midships area which includes the catapult and a few other parts. Now the catapult in the Pontos set is completely uh, or it completely replaces the trumpeter plastic parts uh, so I'm going to be working on that uh, this week for this episode. It's quite a complex uh, structure and there's lots of photo etch in there so we've got another uh, photo etch video but hopefully it should look nice when it's finished so uh, we've got a challenge again with the Pontos instructions unfortunately but uh, I'll try and work through it the problem with this one is that I don't have the opportunity with any spares so when I built the guns for example I always try and do a couple off camera just so that I can work out any pitfalls uh, or problems with that part of the build and once I've done that I'm able then to show you the what I think is the best way of putting the thing together but I'm not going to be able to do that with uh, the catapult I only get one chance at it uh, so there's no room for any practice so let's hope we get it right first off okay so before we start to actually build the catapult itself just uh, a quick look at the area that we're working on now on the model so we've got the forward and aft superstructure decks here. These are the constructions that I've been putting together over the last uh, probably month now. There's all that detail on the bulkheads of these two assemblies. So it's taken a long time to get them sorted out. They're not actually glued down onto the rest of the ship yet. So the catapult lies along this trough here. So it fits inside that. And obviously aircraft could be launched both port and starboard. The uh, catapult extended out beyond the uh, side of the hull to launch the Arado aircraft. And there were actually three hangars. This is hangar number one here, which is in this uh, other superstructure part, which hasn't been prepared yet, but you can see one of the doors is molded open in the trumpeter kit the other one is closed there's plenty of work to do on that and i'll be displaying one of the arados uh, on the catapult although obviously that's not strictly accurate for the denmark strait i doubt that the arados would have been out of the hangars uh, during the battle in fact i'm almost sure of that but for the sake of interest on the model i'll have uh, one of the hangar doors open uh, with an aircraft with folded wings visible inside and also one on the catapult itself with the wings uh, opened out ready for launch although obviously that's not strictly accurate for uh, the period that I'm representing here but it's just really to add interest to the model it's a shame to have those aircraft on board and not to be able to see them so some artistic or modeling license there now you can see here that we've got wooden deck on the aft superstructure and these markings on the Pontos wooden deck are for the hangar rails. So these were removable tracks uh, that were deployed when we wanted to move the aircraft onto the catapult and there were some folding trolleys which are included in the Pontos set. Uh, which helped to haul the aircraft out of the hangar up this slope and onto a turntable on the catapult itself. Uh, hangars 2 and 3 were further back here next to the funnel. This is the opening for the funnel. So they were located back uh, either side. I haven't decided yet which of the three hangars I'm going to show with one of the doors open and the aircraft inside. Uh, but whichever one I do, I'm going to have to do some detailing inside, otherwise it'll just be that void. Although the Pontos wooden deck does extend uh, right the way back to the rear of the hangar itself. But I'll have to have a look at that. The uh, focus for today is to get the catapult done. 
So the other thing that we've got to look at in the area of the catapult is the deck forward. And this is all steel deck. So it's going to be painted in a dark grey and anthracite colour. And we also have this part provided in the Pontos set. This is a brass sheet which provides some additional detail to what's in the trumpeter kit. So it has the plating for the area around the hangers two and three. And some what look like tie down uh, detail as well. And that's absent from the trumpeter kit. I have had to fold this slightly because of the contours on the deck here. The decks rise both fore and aft onto the catapult. And because of that, I've had to fold this brass sheet in two planes, really. The forward area here folds upwards. And there's a slight downslope here uh, around these openings in the deck. So you've got to fold that as well. And I've folded them rather than press the part down. I don't want to put any stress on the glue joint. So that's why I've done the fold. So that's nice and flat on the plastic surface. And I'll be eventually securing this uh, deck piece, this brass deck piece, into place with some epoxy. It's no good using standard super glue to glue a big piece of brass like this onto plastic. Uh, and that's something that I learned when I was building the hood with the rear screens, which were large brass parts going onto the plastic rear screens of the trumpeter kit. And they actually started to buckle and bend uh, later on in the build. So I had to remove them, strip all the glue off, all the super glue off, and attach them with epoxy. Uh, the reason why epoxy is better for a large piece of brass like this on plastic is that the brass expands at different rates to the plastic and eventually it just buckles and twists off. Uh, whereas epoxy will hold it down really firmly onto uh, the plastic deck here. But that's for another day. I'm going to be concentrating today on the catapult build. We'll get all this uh, section sorted out. So there's a number of choices for how you can display the catapult area completely folded with the cover plates on it and all the aircraft uh, stowed away. But as I said, I'm going to add some interest to the kit, although it's not strictly accurate by displaying uh, a couple of the Arados on the model. So let's uh, get the ship out of the way and we'll make a start on the photo etch for the catapult. OK, so this is the fret with all the catapult parts on it and there's quite a number. So I'll make a start by cutting the main components off the fret. It's not always a good idea to remove uh, the Pontos parts from the fret like I'm doing uh, because some of them are slightly different when you've got a pair of parts. But uh, I do it so that you can see the arrangement of the brass off the fret. These parts here are the covers for the catapult, uh, but I don't think I'm going to be fitting all of those, so I'm just going to leave those uh, on the fret for the moment. Okay, so uh, again we've got uh, a bit of a struggle with the Pontos instructions in terms of the folds because they're not shown. It, uh, the instructions just show the parts as they are here, and then the parts already folded up, it doesn't show you where to fold them. So uh, I think I mentioned before that what I do is uh, rather than struggle to understand what's going on, I just start to make the folds where it's absolutely clear. And then once you've done that, it sometimes becomes a bit more apparent 
how the parts go together. So let's uh, start to get some folds done on these. I'm not sure that I'm going to need all these parts. I'm just going to deploy the catapult to one side, the uh, port side, which is the side I'm going to be viewing the model once it's in the display case. So uh, these might be available in case you, for some reason, you wanted to deploy the catapult both sides of the ship, which I don't. So uh, but anyway, we'll, that'll become a bit clearer, hopefully, as we move on. Now to make these bends on such a long piece, obviously some of these are a bit longer than my photo etch pliers. Even the long nose ones are a bit short. Uh, so it's pretty rare for me to use my bending tool. Generally I do most of my photo etch bending with the pliers as you know if you watch the channel. Uh, but for these you need to use uh, a straight edge like this. Having said that, the way that Pontos have etched these pieces means that they've got what are called fast bends in them. So they're not solid all the way along the fold line. There's just little tabs every half centimetre or so. And that means that the parts hardly likely to bend any other way than uh, you want it to. But even so we'll uh, use the photo etch tool. And you just need to apply even pressure all the way across the part from front to back. Now with fast bends it's really important not to press too hard because there's a good chance of breaking them. You might be able to see at intervals along the fold line there's those fast bend tabs. Uh, but don't press too hard on those otherwise uh, they will snap. And you don't want to be trying to solder this whole length. It would be much harder to do like that. Square that up. The tab at the front comes up Just making sure that that's nice and straight. There's also an apparent fold at the back here, but looking at the Pontos instructions, it doesn't show that fold being made at any point. So I'm just going to hang fire with that. There'll come a point where it becomes clear that we've got to fold that one way or another. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Pontos are at Scale Model World this year. If they are, I promise I'll complain to them about the standard of their instructions. I'm intending to uh, go to Telford for the full weekend because uh, I'm hoping to enter the hood into the competition. Not that I'm expecting expecting it to win anything. Uh, experience of going to Telford over the years tells me that you think you're reasonably good at this thing and then you see some of the competition models and they're absolutely incredible. So uh, but I'll take the hood just to see what happens.
I know some people that watch the channel regularly have asked if I'll be uh, displaying this year because they want to see the model for themselves in the flesh so uh, hopefully if I can get it there safely uh, I'll take the hood down it's a shame that I can't get this finished in time but there's no way that I'm going to get this done for November so the second week in November as well so it's pretty early on this year I think normally it's around about the 20th 21st something like that but not this year it's a, it's a week earlier okay so that's those uh, parts as I said, I'll leave those tabs at the end until I know where they're going. Well, normally on an assembly, as you've seen when I've been building the guns, I usually do one or two off camera to start with, just so I get the hang of uh, how the parts go together. Well, that's not possible. You get one chance with this, so I'm uh, working through it as we go along. So I might make some mistakes. I might be lucky and get through it okay. Now there are a number of turned brass parts so I need to get those out and just uh, see if that helps me work out what goes where. So I'm just going to take one of each of these out for the moment. I think that's all we're going to need to assemble the deployed catapult just on one side of the hull. On the other side this would all be covered up by the plating. So we've four turn brass pieces. So I'm guessing that those are the parts that we're going to need uh, to put this together. So we need some of the smaller photo etch now. So we'll get these brackets folded up. This is part number. 86 which is basically just a plate so this is a mounting bracket that folds back on itself with those two flanges at the bottom We need two of those each side. I might get away without the soldering iron actually. I hope so, so I'm not particularly keen on soldering. I started to do it whilst I was building the hood. But uh, I'm not the most skillful at it, I have to admit. But there are some times when you just can't avoid it. Hopefully I will be able to avoid it with this. I had some positive comments last time about taking photographs of the assemblies as I was doing them just to show you how these bends work close up. So I'll do that in this case as well because uh, the photographs I take will be better than the Pontos ones I can assure you. Okay, let's just get a snap of those so you can see uh, how they're looking once they're bent up. Okay, let's try a bit of assembly then.
So to locate this part, we have this bracket, which is part uh, 96. But it also, the piston also has to go through uh, this hole here at the front. And we're not going to be able to do everything at once. So I'll just bend that up. So uh, the piston here should go through that hole. Ah, it doesn't. So this is a cradle. So it needs to be folded to form that U-shaped cradle again. So it goes right back on itself. So as you can see, I'm just learning as I go along here. So it looks like that. Okay, so uh, that's the first section sorted. Show you what that looks like close up. This next part, which is turn brass 27, has got a little slot at the back which allows you to make that 90 degree bend. And that goes to the rear of the piston and the downturn goes through this hole in the base plate. I assume, I don't know, but I assume that that's the uh, pipe for the compressed air presumably that operated the catapult. Okay I'm just going to put that to one side while I work out what we do next. So let's turn our attention back to this part which is the top rail for the catapult and we have to fit the piston rod into this frame uh, but first of all, we've got some axles to fit for the uh, wheels that actually help to slide the catapult up and down. And these axles take a bit of working out from the Pontos instructions because uh, the photograph's just a bit too small to work out what goes on. But they actually go through the frame from either side and they connect together in the middle. So they actually join together. So they're a bit awkward to <clears throat> they're a bit awkward to locate. But they do join together eventually and I'll just secure them together then. With a drop of super thin in the center. And the same at the back here. So they're uh, locked in place. 
I guess Pontos have done it like that, connecting at the middle there because there's a little flange on the outside. So obviously you couldn't just slide it through from one side or the other. Then we've got the piston to fit. This has got a hole through the centre and this is the axle or retaining pin for it. So again that goes through the side and trap the head of the piston rod like that and push it through to the other side and again just a tiny drop of CA. Now the thing is here not to actually fix the piston rod into position because I want a little bit of adjustment on that. That's that section complete. It's actually upside down there. That's the way it goes. So in the end I've actually built both sides of the catapult. It might just be possible to see uh, both sides even with the covers on. So well, I'm just playing safe there. It didn't take long to make the second one up once I'd worked, uh, worked out how this one went together. There are some small details, some little brackets to fit on the side here. But if I put them on now they'll just get broken so I'm going to leave them off for the time being. This part which is 83 and 84 overlays the part here. I'm not sure whether that's absolutely necessary but As soon as we've got it we might as well fit it. So with a part like this I'm just going to tack it in position with a bit of medium CA just at the back and probably halfway along like that. And then again going back to the super thin, this is where super thin glue comes in really useful. Various intervals up and down the frame. And it'll just wick into the photo etch and fix that part in place. These little legs at the front just wrap round. This is where an expert with a soldering iron would be able to just solder this top plate into position but it's uh, beyond me. So I'm not going to risk messing the whole thing up. So the same again with uh, this other side. Okay, so those are the top rails done. Just forgot to fold that down. It, you do need to fold this down at the back. I mentioned it earlier on in the video well I wasn't sure but uh, you do okay I'm happy with those this is the base plate and it actually sits directly onto the trumpeter plastic the channel that I showed you earlier on we just have a couple of uh, photo etch pieces to fit to that base plate which I'll do now. 
So the uh, sound you can probably hear is a fan. It's so warm here today in the shed that I can't do without some form of cooling. So again we've got to fold that uh, bracket up to form well basically a rib shape. It's not easy to see that second part on there, certainly not on the photograph, but it's the only place where it can fit. And as I said, that goes directly onto the deck of the ship in that channel. Now I think it's safe enough to put these uh, brackets on the side. There are eight of them all together across the two assemblies and their guides for the uh, cables on the side of the catapult. So when bent they just form a very shallow channel. These then just fix onto the side. So you can see why I didn't want to fit these earlier would almost certainly have got broken off. Okay, now I want to fit the pulleys. We uh, did the axles earlier on for the pulleys. just eight of these. Pontos give us 16 for some reason. I wonder if they're on the cranes. So on each pivot or on each axle we need a wheel. So we'll do one side at a time and First of all, locate the rear wheel, if we can keep hold of it. And then very carefully locate the pulleys. Say carefully because we don't want to uh, damage the very fine photo etch because once it's bent you're not going to get that straight really. And then finish it off with another wheel. So drop of super glue that's medium CA and just attach the wheel over the top. The same for the other side. I miscounted, didn't I? We do need 16. So that's all the pulleys done. That's uh, relatively straightforward. If I were doing these again, I wouldn't glue the axles onto the sides of the frame, and that would just give a bit of a lateral adjustment. Uh, for these cables, but uh, we'll live and learn. Nearly there with this, we've just got a few more bits and pieces to add. I can't identify these pieces in the Anatomy of the Ship book, but they look like a sort of brake shoe. So maybe with something to do with slowing down the wheels on the catapult once it had been deployed. But I don't know for sure. 
So there are eight of those. They do go around the wheels, so that's what I'm guessing they do. The trick, as you can see, is to get them located. Again, I'll give you a close-up of those, if I can get it, for the end of the video. Okay, so those are the components of the catapult done. When we come to fit these, there'll be some more things to do. There's some platforms to fit around the deployed catapult. So I'll do those once the main elements fitted to the ship. Last we've got these little strips of brass that go along the top of the catapult. Okay, so they're all done. In terms of fitting these to the ship, uh, I'm not sure that I can yet. I'm going to have to do a little bit more research because obviously this side, which I've fitted, uh, is designed to have the catapult in an extended position ready for launch. What I'm not sure of is if the catapult extended on both sides simultaneously or whether one or the other or both could be extended I'm not sure whether that uh, happened I'd really prefer just to have one side extended and one side closed so that I can cover one side with these photo etch covers so there's grates that go over the top but I can't do that if uh, the mechanism was such that both sides moved at the same rate. So I'm going to have to do a bit of research and check that out. But what I can do is show you what the catapult looks like on the ship. And I'll also get some close-up photographs of the parts as I've built them here. Okay, so here we are with the midships section again. And our catapult just drops into the channel here. And you can see how that is now overhanging the side of the ship. So the aircraft will be deployed right out here on the edge of the uh, superstructure deck. But as I said, I'm not sure what I can do about this other side. Uh, because I don't really want both catapults extended like that. But for accuracy, I may have to. What I would prefer is that this starboard one could be positioned in its stowed state inboard and covered by the platings, the gratings that bridge the gap between the forward and aft superstructure decks. If I can deploy this one in what is effectively the stowed state in that sort of position. All I've got to do is to reduce the length of the piston, which is here. So basically cut the rod off uh, and that will enable me to position the starboard catapult inboard like that. Something like that. And at that stage I'll cover the gap with the gratings that I showed you earlier on. But for now I'll position them as it appears that Pontos would have us do. In other words to have them both 
in a deployed state and that's the way that I'll leave it for the time being. Now in terms of other work to do with this I described earlier on how the aircraft came out of the hangars on rails so I'm going to be fitting some but not all of the rails they were detachable so I'll fit some of the Arado rails and I really want to fit the bridging plates between the two pieces of deck we've got some great covers as well here and we also have the aircraft handling trolleys and turntable which goes on here as well so a little bit more to do with this but uh, in the main I'm glad that the catapults have gone together really well they're going to look really nice when they're painted up okay so uh, I'm going to leave it at that this week that's one side of the catapult done I just need to uh, as I said work out if I can display the other side in the close position whether or not that that's accurate and I'm sure there's someone out there uh, who will know the answer to that question so if uh, you can explain to me how that catapult did deploy I'd uh, like to hear from you thanks uh, but just before I close this week I know that some of you like to see a comparison of the Pontos parts with the trumpeter equivalents and you can judge whether or not it's worth doing the work on these Pontos sets. This is the equivalent uh, part of the trumpeter catapult. The most striking thing is you can see how much shorter it is than the Pontos equivalent. Uh, and actually I don't think that's a bad effort from trumpeter the detail of the frame on the top is there it's obviously not as fine as the photo etch uh, but it's a slide molded piece there's the main body uh, in one piece the wheels are separate and the piston underneath is a separate part although it doesn't uh, contain the detail of the separate piston rod uh, and the housing like we have on the Pontos equivalent here on the underside. But overall that's not going to look bad on a model particularly if you display one of the aircraft on it. Now interestingly when it comes to fitting these Trumpeter just show us to deploy them inboard Uh, and to fit the aircraft later on I'm not sure whether that's completely accurate as I said we need to understand a bit more how these catapults were deployed before I go any further so I'll leave it at that I'll just get a photograph of that for comparison as well uh, but I'll leave it there for this week okay so that's it for this episode I've uh, had my fill this week of photo etch again so I'm going to give my eyes a rest uh, over the next week hopefully and I really need to make some uh, more progress and get the mosquito finished you can see uh, it's not too far off now uh, but I've not posted on the mosquito for probably uh, five or six weeks something like that whilst I've been building the Bismarck but I really do need to get it finished because I've got plans for another 132 scale kit uh, coming up as soon as I finish the mosquito. So I'll be focusing on the mosquito over the next few days and hopefully uh, I'm going to try and get it uh, somewhere near completed uh, over the next couple of weeks or so ready for that next 32 scale build. So a bit of a change for next week I'll lift the mosquito up the schedule and I'll publish an update on uh, the progress on the mosquito next Friday. So thanks for joining me for this uh, update on the Bismarck build everybody and I hope to see you next week uh, if you want to see the Mosquito moved on a little bit. So stay safe, enjoy your modelling and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.